<laughs> oh my, if that's any indication, I gotta tell you, you are in for a real treat in this segment of Frame. Our next guest has taken something that most of us have used as an entertainment or educational tool and turned it into an entire, entirely mm -hmm. cool art form. With me is multidisciplinary artist Mel Andringa. Thanks, welcome to Frame, Mel. Hi, Yvette. Thanks for coming to my studio. I love your studio. It's so happy. Well, it's quite and a, sort of. It, I, I do do some work here because I, I can just do it on the tabletops and so forth. But uh, I do have an, another studio that I oh. that I use as well. This is more my showroom and my um, the place where I do interviews. Oh, really? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. we're not there right now. Oh, how'd that happen? Uh, my studio is some other place. Your interviewing studio. It's just it's so cramped packed full of puzzle boxes <laughs> that you can't walk in it. So that's that's much we're much more commodious here. <laughs> well, what I was talking about in the intro that I didn't really give people uh, the idea of what it what it is, but I'm sure you can tell now is puzzles. Mel has figured out the secret to puzzles and <laughs> how they are stamped, and has turned puzzles into an art form. So I, I'm going to stop talking and I would love for you to tell us how this came about, how, when you figured it out. And Well, you know, it's not, it's not like it was, uh, it's not like it took a genius to figure it out. It, 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 it was an, an accident. Um, and, well, just like I just put this little, um, this cup together and I'm putting mm -hmm. these little, kind of gluing these broken cups together. Jigsaw is a mosaic form. And the first jigsaw puzzle probably was when the first time somebody dropped something and uh, it broke into pieces and then they reassembled uh, assembled it. Um, the, the idea of, um, uh, that I came across um, was that manufacturers use the same stamp to, to cut lots of different pictures. I, I discovered this when I was 10 years old. And so, so any, anybody, if, if I could do it when I was 10, anybody can do it. I know, but I know. haven't met anybody else who has, so well, that's why I think it's pretty spectacular. Anyway, they, I, I had a, a set of World War II airplane puzzles for my cousin Bruce, mm -hmm. and they were, uh, you know, sort of fighter airplanes that were going in this direction and this direction. They had ratty tats and smoke uh, sort of things, and they had the same stamp and, and blue backgrounds for the sky, see? And I found out that I could mix them together and make crashes, Ooh, you know, mid-air collisions with the, with, with the thing. That's a very strong <laughs> mnemonic, something you remember a long time. That is true. So later on when I was in college, I thought about that. I remembered mm -hmm. that idea and I, and I looked and I found some puzzles to see whether they still did that and, or uh -huh. whether they did it for adult puzzles. And it turns out the puzzles are, uh, the uh, stamps are very expensive to make. And oh, yeah. so, uh, and complicated to make, and as a result, they use them for lots of different pictures. I had a little grant to do uh -huh. a performance, a little theater project, and I had some money left over. I decided to really invest in my future, and so I went to Goodwills and Salvation Armies and secondhand stores, and I bought, at that time, you could buy them for a quarter, um, mm. you know, jigsaw puzzle, and uh, I just bought Hundreds of them, hundreds. I, I have thousands now, but I had uh -huh. I bought hundreds then, uh -huh. and then I just figured out which ones would match up with each other ones. I do it in a kind of simple way. When I find a puzzle, I search until I find the the uh, corner pieces. See. Okay. And all I do is I I, I try to find three of the corner pieces, uh -huh. and then if I find the three corner pieces, I put them in an envelope, and then I close the box. And then the next time I find a box from the same company that has the same size, I think maybe they'll mix, you know, maybe they sure. will. So then I search through the second one mm -hmm. and I try to find two of the corners in the second one. And if one of the two from the second one m matches one of the three from the first, first one. one, then the two puzzles match. And then I put the first one together like this one, and then okay. I look for another, uh, then I start the other one, I work it on top of the first one. When you work with a jigsaw puzzle, you're working with two kinds of information on the piece. Mm -hmm. You're working with the shape of the piece, yes, 
and the shape of the information on the piece. Yes. So that's why when you do a, uh, a puzzle that's almost all sky, mm -hmm. it's hard because you're, you only really have one kind of information. You have the information, the shape of the piece, but the right. shape of the information on the piece is all blue. That makes it twice as hard. On the other hand, if all the puzzle pieces were exactly the same shape, but have a different part of the picture on it, that would be twice as hard. I work the, the second one on top of it, and I do it for another reason, not only to make it faster, but also to see the registration of the two images. So right. if this is one picture, then the next picture, I do it on top of it, then I see how those two pictures fit together. Because okay. I can't move this piece to that location. That got it, piece got it, got it, got goes it. in that location, but I but I can move the piece that's exactly this shape and exactly that size. I can switch it out with the other one. Yes. And by working them on top of each other, maybe I'll get a little uh, idea like a, a pun. Okay. I'll say like the, the the one with the uh, that's called big rack. The, the 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 raccoons coming out of the uh, out, out of the hamburger, right? So it, maybe it's a little pun, like a, uh -huh. an audio pun that I think of because you spend time working with the jigsaw puzzle. So you you, you know maybe a little gag like that, uh -huh. gag like that comes out uh, comes out of the uh, out of the idea, and then you put that together, and that's what it is, and, and that's what it is. Other times. They don't fit together very well visually, but it might be that there's a kind of a pattern in the way the pieces are laid out, and you might be able to do something kind of conceptual, like um, uh, take a row from puzzle A, and then a row from puzzle B, and then okay, a, switch it sure. with a row from B, sort of knit with it, right. or create a kind of conceptual uh, pattern, you know. So I've found so many different ways to do these, uh, to mix them together, that they kind of mimic the, the history of, uh, uh, you know, art history, where artists sometimes do things conceptually, sometimes they do things intuitively, sometimes they do things kind of painterly, sometimes mm -hmm. they do things with a, a surrealist kind of twist to mm -hmm. it and so forth and so on. I went to the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art yep. and saw the pieces that you have in the show. Uh -huh. So tell us about the exhibition and your inclusion in it. Well, that's an ex exhibition of works that were, um, that the museum acquired in the last uh, five years mm -hmm. uh, from lo from area artists. It's Lure and, of the Locals is yeah, the name it's called of the Lure show. Lure the Local. And I had a show at Cornell. They saw mm -hmm. one of those and they and they uh, wanted one of them. It was a kind of a, a, a man's head mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's made out of oh half a dozen different puzzles and I kind of paint with the pieces to create the, essentially the silhouette of the man's head and he's wearing a hat and um, and it's called Mad as a Hatter. It includes puzzles of newspapers, puzzles of flower bouquets, a gumball machine, various other other things, and then all all kind of put together in patches so they, they had, and there was a companion piece to it called Bee in Her Bonnet, which is a, a, a kind of a female head with mm -hmm. a kind of floral hat on, on her, on her yeah. head. I want to know about your glasses though. Everybody wants to know, I'm not the only one. Oh, I got them in Venice I, on a New Year's Eve of course. I lost my glasses, uh, <laughs> fell into a canal or something. I don't know. I, I don't quite remember. It, yeah, was, a, it, was. it was New Year's yeah. Eve. And uh, I had to get a new pair while I was there. And actually, people have been going to Venice for glasses since Galileo. Even Elton mm -hmm. John goes to uh, Venice for glasses. And, and um, they have shops that only make one kind of glasses, you know, yeah. their, their own brand and their own kind of thing. So, so this wasn't the most unusual one. Some were like a twig across your brow and uh, two little hanging pieces of glass or, or shards of glass that look like you walked into a plate glass window, you know. You can get good stuff in, in Venice. We're gonna go, we need yeah, a trip. Yeah. We need a yeah, fashion yeah. art trip yeah, in yeah. Venice. Yeah. We'll call it, no, I won't say that on camera. Oh, this has been a delight. Okay. Exciting, thank you. You're welcome. You were spectacular. I, thank, you for, thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. I want everyone to know about your work. All right. We'll Tell get busy them about on some that. other people. You got some other artists <laughs> yeah, coming up? There we go. <laughs> I, yes, yes. I, I make my rounds all in positive uh -huh. ways, but I am so committed to this project yeah. and uh, you know, being a part of the conversation and getting people to think. Well, anything we can do to support the artist community. Thank you. you I bet. appreciate it so much, Mel. Okay. All right. I told you we're in for a treat. Thanks for tuning in to the segment of Frame.
Frame is sponsored by Allegra. Click Marketing Solutions. Dial Folio Jewelry.